Dane, dame i gospodo, hvala vam što sudjelujete na drugom danu iz kolektiva. Moji gosti danas su gospodin Simone Di Mateo iz Interpola, gospođa Kristina Posovec iz Policijskog uskoka, gospodin Irfan Bakašiš iz Turkish National Police. Did I get the name right? Yes, ok, thank you. I gospodin Jasar Jaman, Pfizer Global Security. Dobar dan. Gospodine Di Mateo, kako je Interpol, na koji se način Interpol bori protiv svih ovih stvari koje smo čuli u ovim uvodnim izlaganjima? Ajmo početi sa tim. So, thank you very much, first of all, for the great opportunity to be here today. Uh, I'm uh, in charge of the European um, program uh, within the Interpol Traffic in Lisi Goods program, so we are trying to coordinate uh, collective efforts uh, against uh, um, illicit trade, so we are including in our target uh, uh, intellectual property crime as well as other types of illicit trade, so cigarette smuggling are very focused uh, on these particular crimes. Uh, so Interpol is, uh, the, um, as you you know, uh, is the um, uh, widest, the biggest uh, uh, police organization, international police organization in the world. We have 190 member countries. Um, of course, this means that we have uh, uh, a lot of diversity in terms of uh, uh, national situations, legal frameworks, and whatever. Uh, our efforts aim at uh, uh, trying to harmonize, uh, harmonize the, um, the activities against illicit trade uh, to uh, facilitate the exchange of information be because this crime is more and more transnational. It's very easy to produce and to distribute uh, these goods, uh, fake goods, um, from a, a country to the other, even from a region uh, to the other of the world. Uh, so um, we, um, we want to convey the message, first of all, across the, the, the whole law enforcement community, because our public is mainly composed of uh, police um, forces all around the world, that this crime must be considered a priority. Uh, so this is why, um, if you ask me which is our first task uh, within the law enforcement community, I would say that uh, it's the raising awareness because it's uh, a crime uh, still very often underestimated. And after this raising awareness, of course, we uh, build capacity within our member countries. Vratit ćemo se vama, kada ćete meni pričati konkretno o nekim konkretnim akcijama, sigurno našu publiku to zanima. Gospodžo Posavec, politijski uskok često je u medijima zbog određenih akcija, ali Hrvatska javno zapravo toliko ne poznaje vaš rad u smislu zaštite intelektualnog vlasništva. Što vi radite da bi zaštitili intelektualno vlasništvo? Kakve akcije? Pa evo, željela bi naglasiti da je krajem prošle godine upravo u okviru Politiskog nacionalnog ureda za zbijanje korupcije i organizirano kriminaliteta osnovano odjel za visokotehnološki kriminalitet, čija je zadača između ostalog i borba protiv kaznjenih dijela na štetu intelektualnog vlasništva. To je novi ured? Da, da, to je nova ustrojstvena jedinica. Dakle, prije te ustrojstvene jedinice Postavljali su specializirani policijski službenici u okviru službe gospodarskog kriminaliteta i korupcije koji su se bavili ovom problematikom. No, međutim, ustrojanjem ove jedinice povećali smo svoje kapacitete i jedna od naših glavnih zadača je... Koliko je ispričan se što vas prekidam? Koliko je velika jedna jedinica? Kako ona izgleda? Ako nam smijete reći da... Da, nije baš tako velika kao što možda mislite. Znači, sastoji se od četiri policijska službenika i voditelja. Nije puno, ali trudimo se na najbolji način pojačati naše kapacitete. Prvenstveno to mislim i u smislu edukacije, dakle konstantne edukacije kako na domaćem, tako i na međunarodnom planu. Isto tako suradnjom sa drugim državnim tijelima, ali i privatnim sektorom čija je zadaća zaštita intelektualnog vlasništva i naravno naš operativni rad po samim konkretnim povredama prava intelektualnog vlasništva. Onda ćemo se vratiti na operativni rad, zadržite tu misao. Pfizer je jedna od najvećih kompanija u svijetu. Krivotvorenje lijekova je, kada sam si pripremao za ovu konferenciju, shvatio sam koliko je to veliki problem. U kojem smislu je krivotvorenje lijekova veliki problem? U smislu velike štete koje industrija trpi, ali i u smislu opasnosti za zdravlje pacijenta?
counterfeit medicines um, pose serious health risk for the patients. And uh, as Pfizer, our main focus is patient safety. Uh, we do not know the ex exact extent of the problem, but we do know that this is a growing problem impacting all the countries, regardless developing, developed, or underdeveloping. And counterfeiters are using complex transshipment routes to hide the main source of supply. And this is a kind of um, high income, low risk. That's why it's attracting uh, organized criminals. If we return to the situation in Croatia, um, we see uh, websites offering medicine as the main threat for the time being. Koji lijek, kako možemo, vas, ako, uh, ispričam se, treba vremena dok stavite slušalice, uh, koji vaš lijek se najčešće krivotvori i, i da li je on u ovom dijelu Europe također uh, dostupan yeah. u smislu krivotvorina, da li je u ovom dijelu Europe taj problem prisutan? Yeah, um, most frequently counterfeited Pfizer product is Viagra. Viagra is a lifestyle medicine, but what we have uh, begun to see is that the uh, criminal organizations are shifting from lifestyle medicines such as Viagra to life-saving medicines such as, for instance, Norwask, which is for blood pressure. Yes. Uh, Turska je zemlja koja ima strahovit gospodarski rast. Uh, u kojem smislu se Turska policija bori uh, da bi spriječila velike štete? Siguran sam da i Turska industrija bi snažnije rasla kada bi se spriječile povrede intelektualnog vlasništva u, u svakom korporativnom smislu. Možete li nam ispričati kako se, vi ba, kako se vi borite protiv zaštite prava i... Uh, IP crimes uh, in our country are generally based on complaint. Uh, so uh, we have to cooperate with the private sector firstly uh, at all. Uh, I think uh, to combat IP crimes effectively Uh, we should uh, train the, our pa personnel uh, because uh, we need uh, specialized uh, units uh, to combat crime. <clears throat> And then uh, we, you're, we you're ahead of one of those units, if I uh, uh, I'm uh, in the Turkish National Police uh, Center, and uh, we organize the operations and uh, co collecting the statistics and uh, stuff like this, uh, we should focus the uh, criminals first. Because uh, uh, the money uh, who lose of uh, the companies yes. is going to the uh, criminals' pockets, yes. you yes. know. Uh, which <coughs> product is mostly, uh, you, you don't need uh, I, ah, okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, the short questions, I'll do it in English. Which product is mostly counterfeited in Turkey? Uh, uh, mostly the textile products. Uh, because uh, it's ch cheap made, uh, they they, uh, they gain so uh, so much profit from them, yes. uh, and then CDs. Yes, CDs. Yes. We talked about that last in, night. Yes. In la uh, last years, uh, we faced with uh, uh, medicines yes. also. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Bertina. Uh, Uh, okay, you have your headphones, I'll talk in Croatian. Who uh, proizvodi ove lažne lijekove, recimo, evo, gospodin iz Pfizera je govorio uh, o lažnim lijekovima. Ko se bavi tim? Da li su to organizacije, pojedinci? Koliko je taj sustav zapravo organiziran koji proizvodi lažne lijekove? We have acquired the uh, experience um, We have our program, we have established our program at Interpol since 2004, and we have um, been working in different regions of the world, noticing that uh, there are common denominators about uh, um, intellectual property crime, about the production and the distribution, so the routes and whatever. So criminals are very opportunistic, so they are um, able to identify very fast uh, the trends on the market, so Uh, producing products which are demanded on the market. Um, what we want to point out is that uh, um, this crime is very often considered as not a priority, I repeat it. Also in countries with a strong uh, legislation, uh, I come from Italy, and it's still difficult to make uh, our colleagues in the field uh, that this crime must be 
uh, addressed as a priority because they say, okay, it's You're the, talking about public awareness. Exactly. Yeah. This okay. public awareness. So first of all, this public awareness um, is still to be, to be raised within the law enforcement level, at the law enforcement level. Um, the, uh, these criminals, anyway, invest money. Uh, IP crime is normally just a part of the general investment mm -hmm. of uh, organized criminal groups. Uh, we have been reported many cases of uh, um, uh, production and distribution of fake goods that were also linked to other crime areas. This is according to the reports we, we uh, periodically receive, and it's not enough because we want to, to receive more and more because exchange information is vital to identify, uh, uh, the, the, to better understand the threat and to identify the criminal groups behind the, the illicit trade. But I would say, these cases show how uh, IP crime is linked to other crime areas. So this is the um, link with organized crime. Yeah. Um, because penalties are not so stringent, it's easy to produce and to distribute these goods. Yeah. Uh, there's a lack of awareness. Uh, there, there's also a lack of legislation in many cases, yeah. lack of specialized units, lack of uh, uh, um, effective uh, national cooperation. So this makes uh, very interesting the investment for criminals in this particular area. Um, of course, to produce, to establish a production, it's, it's not so, so easy. So this is why there are investments, there are human resources, mm. uh, there's the exploitation of um, uh, illegal uh, so we're talking uh, about serious, serious criminal intent, if Absolutely. I get it right. Absolutely. So yes. this is why so. we are really trying to convey this message across the, first of all, I repeat, because our public is our, the, the law enforcement, first of all, of course, prosecutors as well. And in order to achieve this goal, it's absolutely important to involve all the stakeholders, so to work with the private sector. As Irfan was uh, saying, um, um, for instance, the, the private sector has the expertise, Okay, hold your thought, hold your thought, please. Yeah. We'll get to that, right? Gospodžo Posavec, skoro sam na englatkom krenu, ispričan se, teško mi se šaltiti malo, ali pokušat ću. Govorili ste o edukacijskim kampanjama, ali mene više zanima ovaj politički dio posla, pa ćemo se vratiti na kampanje. Koja se roba u Hrvatskoj najviše krivotvori? Što vaše iskustvo govori? Pa da, prema našim iskustvima, dakle, najviše krivotvorene odjuće obuće i dodataka, dakle, torbi, remena, sunčanih naučala i sl. Znači, to je roba koja je uglavnom u najvećim količinama. Gdje se to prodaje? Dakle, postoji ona, tako nazovemo, klasična prodaja na štandovima, tržnicama, prigodnim sajmovima i sl. No, međutim, ono što nama posljednje vrijeme predstavlja puno veći problem, to je online prodaj, odnosno preko interneta, znači ražitih internet oglasnika i društvenih mreža. Kako izgledaju vaše akcije? Možete li nam opisati koliko naravno nam smijete reći? Koliko često idete u akcije? Koliko ste ljudi uhitili? Dakle, policija konstantno provodi rad po toj problematici. S tim da povremeno organiziramo i pojačana postupanja koje su usmjerene upravo na ta nekakva žarišta, odnosno kritične točke, gdje je uočeno da je pojačana prodaj krivotvornih proizvoda. Gdje su kritične točke? Pa recimo, konkretno tijekom turističke sezone, to su uglavnom naša turistička odredišta na Jadranu, dakle gdje su povećan priljev turista, to pokazuje kao jedan još od doradnih izvora zarade za ljude koji se time bave. Kolika je kvaliteta kvaliteta, nemojte me krivo shvatiti, te krivotvorene robe, da li potrošač može razlikovati to, koliko su zapravo uložili kriminalci, tako ih možemo razliti, kao što kaže gospodin Bertina, u falsificiranju. Da, dakle, to su proizvodi koji su u pravilu izuzetno loše kvalitete. No, međutim, kod nas treba uzeti u obzir i cijelokupnu gospodarsku i društvenu situaciju u zemlji, dakle, gdje jednostavno takva vrsta robe ljudima puno dostupnija od originala. Neki puta su to i... Pogotovo sada kada je kriza, ljudi imaju manje... Jasno, jasno. Međutim, upravo zato radimo i na ovom dijelu osješćivanja ljudi o upravo štetnosti takvih krivotvorenih proizvoda. Edukacijske kampanje, da to vas prekidam. Da. Da ostavim pitanje za poslije. Da. Gospodine Bakašić, Turska je na križenju svijetova. Turska je tranzitna zemlja, Turska je jedan od svjetskih trgovačkih divova, ima veliku trgovačku povijest. U kojem smislu je to Turskoj problem s obzirom na veliki protok robe i na mogućnost da ta roba bude krivotvorena? Da li je vaš posao usmjeren upravo na suzbijanje te trgovine na granicama? Kako to izgleda? Kako je to izgleda? 
Uh, this crime attracts organi organized uh, crime groups and uh, that they are able to uh, even over a short period of a time uh, make considerable uh, profits from from it. Um, so IP crimes uh, are uh, causing loss of taxes uh, for the uh, country. Uh, yeah, th there's a special problem. And yes, uh, it's special uh, problem. Another problem uh, is unfair earnings uh, of of this uh, organized crimes. Is uh, Mr. Dimeo uh, said. Yes, yes. Uh, I read somewhere that if the piracy would fall for 15% globally, that uh, the world could create 500,000 jobs. Is that right, mathematics? Uh, Half of a million jobs. So uh, I, I couldn't yes, If the piracy would fall in the world mm -hmm. for 15%, a lot of new jobs c could be created. Uh, may maybe it's possible, but uh, we, we can't say a certain thing about these statistics. Uh, okay, thank you. We'll get to. Uh, Can I contribute? Yeah, to yeah, sure. Uh, this question. Yes, yes. Because I'm obviously Turkish yes, as okay. well. Yes. And I used to be a law enforcement in Turkey before joining Pfizer. Um, Turkey has. So you used to be a, a police officer before your Correct. Yeah. corporate yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I used to be the head of Turkish narcotic police before. Yeah, sorry, I didn't Pfizer. know your that element from your CV. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Turkey has two dimensions um, here: as a transit country, as a source country. The problem with regards to country medicines in Turkey relatively was quite big, especially in 2006 and 7, and this was causing severe problems. Um, there is a saying, um, a problem well defined is health salt. So the authorities in Turkey did this definition, I think, quite well. Yeah, I'm sorry. So yes. what they did, they increase the coordination between the local agencies in Turkey. Yeah. For instance, um, customs, police, in some cases, Ministry of Health, especially in our case. Mm -hmm. And police also understood necessity for long-term investigations. Mm -hmm. uh, for only three months ago, the police in Turkey made an investigation which took 11 months. Mm -hmm. They used all kinds of police techniques, such as tele telephone surveillance, yes. which enabled them to identify all those people, yes. main players, supplying the market with counterfeit uh, products, including counterfeit medicines. And then one day, they raided over 45 addresses. The medicines were a problem in Turkey then, also. Yeah. They raided 45 addresses and arrested more than 100 people. This is actually uh, maybe why we have a representative from Turkey, because we sometimes consider Turkey as a best practice, especially with this regard. There used to be a problem. Now they are taking serious actions, and this is where we are at the moment. They are uh, taking very efficient measures and doing very good investigations. Maybe Sinoy can also give some examples on this. Yes, he would. Ali prvo, samo trenutak moram se ispričati zbog krivog oslovljavanja. Zvao sam vas gospodine Bertina, zvuči italijansko, pa u toj raspravi sam vam krivo rekao ime. Dakle, gospodine Dimeo, ispričavam se još jednom. I ponavljam vam pitanje. Konkretne akcije Interpola vezane za ovo što je rekao gospodin Jeman? I'm very much used to, um, to uh, have my name uh, uh, differently interpreted, so yes. it's uh, I was focused the on the con time. I was focused on the content, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, to give you an example, practical example, uh, we started working in Turkey in 2009. So, first of all, the first step was the, um, the capacity building uh, dimension. So, we organized a uh, um, big conference uh, with a workshop uh, in order to, to train middle managers. We are saying it's important to, first of all, to address the middle manager level. Uh, we had also representatives from different countries, neighboring countries. Uh, I also had the pleasure to meet uh, Christina. At that, that time, she, she, she came mm. to, to share the information and, and best So practices. you all know each other, really? Yes, in yes. fact, okay. today it's a, it was a very good opportunity to, to, mm. to meet after three years. Time's passing by fast. And uh, at that time, so we, we started with this capacity building, and we repeated this, uh, this experience uh, um, twice. <coughs> And then we, we work also with other neighboring countries such as Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Then we wanted, after these uh, trainings, we wanted to translate the willingness and the knowledge that had been raised uh, 
thanks to them, into action, and we organized uh, a simultaneous deployment covering uh, uh, the region. So we call it Black Poseidon because it was taking place around the Black Sea, involving uh, Ukraine, Turkey, Moldova, Belarus. Mm. So we worked with these countries, and it was very important, first, uh, an, a very important experiment because during a month, uh, all the uh, police services from these countries, uh, police customs, mm. but also with the support of prosecutors, IP offices, mm. and the private sector that um, shared the, what we call actionable intelligence, mm. so significant cases, uh, we asked them to increase the number of interventions, the quality of intervention, to share information mm. between different services, and to also then to identify transnational cases. Mm. This during one month of action. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we collected, Interpol had the coordinating role, we collected the significant information about trends, about pro new products to be um, being counterfeited, uh, nominal information about criminals that can be generally considered mm -hmm. just involved in the, on, in the national market, but instead they are distributing goods mm -hmm. across yeah. the region. Yes. So just after this month of action, we uh, were able to identify some trends and a way to, uh, to, to, imp to improve the, the quality of our information yes. as are well. You, are you satisfied with the quality of the police business in regarding these issues in Croatia? Excuse me? Yes, are you uh, satisfied with the quality that the Croatian pol police is uh, doing in regarding these problems? Yeah, um, um, Croatia now is, uh, uh, is, um, has become a member country of the European Union, so well, we started also in 2009 uh, uh, organizing some trainings uh, uh, in Croatia and in other regions in, in the Balkans. So for us now, it's uh, much more important to have uh, Croatia uh, supporting our initiatives because Croatia is in the Balkans uh, with the status of European member country. Uh, 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 will Croatia have a serious problem when, it, when Croatia opened its borders in, in yeah, EU it, membership? Yeah, it does. We have seen how, of course, also yesterday in the panel, we have seen how uh, heavy is the, the impact of, uh, for instance, internet pirate, um, the illegal downloading on the, on the economy. We are really destroying, but it's not only a Croatian problem. This is, again, a common denominator. Um, but the, 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 in the, the music industry is suffering uh, this uh, illegal competition, of course, this, uh, this uh, effect. So uh, we, we are really much um, uh, interested in uh, uh, working with Croatia in having Croatia supporting our initiative, we need to exchange more information again with, uh, with Croatia and with the other countries here. Is it the first time here or you, you already? It's not, the, my, it's not my first time. I was already here for a workshop organized with the European Commission. So Croatia, even without being a, member a European member country, was on the beneficiary list of the European Commission for this important pro uh, program called TIEX. Uh, you have, uh, I'm sure, heard about it uh, in order to um, uh, to build capacity, of course, to strengthen cooperation in, uh, uh, in some fields particularly interesting for the European uh, Union interests. Okay. We have already organized uh, something here in Croatia with, uh, with this, and now, of course, we can... Interpol now has a very important... Uh, um, has received a very important financial contribution from the private sector. So now, apart from work, continuing uh, uh, working with uh, European institutions, uh, because Funds are a problem, of course. If we want to train, to build capacity, we need also yeah. we'll, resources. We'll, we'll talk about funds later, please. Yeah. Uh, Gospodžo Pozovec, obećao sam pitanje edukacijske kampanje. Strahovito su bitne. I učer smo u razgovoru oko zaštite intelektualnog vlasništva, u, u, oko copyrightsa, shvatili da puno ljudi zapravo nije svjesno da su u prekršaju. Da li je onaj koji kupi krivotvorenu robu isto u prekršaju? I koliko vi radite na tome da građani postanu svjesni da ako i kupe robu, da su i oni u prekršaju? Da, upravo što ste spomenuli, izuzetno, izuzetno je važno osvijestiti građane o štetnosti, štetnosti takvog ponašanja. E, ono što ste spomenuli prekršaj, odnosno domena prekršaja ili kaznenog dijela, e, to je vrlo važno e, razlučiti dakle, da policija neće progoniti osobu koja je downloadala, da tako kažemo kolokvijalno, jednu pjesmu sa interneta. Iako naravno, teoretski, Iako, na naravno moramo, naglasiti, da, moramo naglasiti dakle, da je uh, skidanje muzike, filmova, igrice, računalnih programa, bilo čega, iz neovlaštenih, neotraziranih izvoja svakako suprotno, suprotno zakonu i krši pravo intelektualnog vlasništva. Dakle, da ne bi ljudi stekli dojam da je to što rade dozvoljeno. Međutim, tu se naravno postavlja pitanje kaznene domene i postupanja policije u takvim slučajima. Uh, 
Također, vezano za podizanje javne svijesti, dakle, policija u sklopu nacionalne strategije razvoja sustava intelektualnog vlasništva Republici Hrvatskoj sudjeluje u zajedničkim radnim skupinama, zajedno sa carinom, sa državnim odjetništvom, sa državnim inspektoratom, državnim zavodom za intelektualno vlasništvo i drugim nadležnim tijelima. Jedna od tih je upravo i ta za podizanje razine javne svijesti. Kako te kampanje izgledaju? Što... Dakle, organiziraju se zajedničke akcije, vjerojatno ste čuli za akciju Stop krivotvorinama i piratstvu, koje se organiziraju diljem Hrvatske, bili su držani u Zagrebu, u City centru, u nekim drugim trgovačkim centrima, u Rijeci, Splitu i Osijeku, dakle, gdje su predstavnici svih relevantnih tijela i nastoje približiti tu problematiku građanima, educirati što se smije, što ne smije, kakva je štetnost tih krivotvorinih proizvoda, kakve posljedice mogu očekivati i sl. Isto tako, postoji i web stranica Stop krivotvorinama na piratstvu, na kojem građani mogu dobiti sve relevantne informacije vezane za tu temu. Molim vas, strahovito me zanima ovaj problem krivotvorenja lijekova. Ispričajte nam, molim vas, jednu od najzanimljivih situacija s kojim ste se susreli u svom poslu. Da li ste našli neku veću skupinu krivotvoritelja? Kako izgleda zapravo vaš radin dan? Ispričajte nam nešto zanimljivo vezano za svoj posao. Um, certainly. Um, I'm based in Dubai. I'm covering the Middle East and uh, Eastern Europe. And most of the time, the uh, country of medicines are coming from China to the Middle East. They're, they're produced in China? Produced, mostly produced in China. I should add that the Chinese government is also taking serious uh, actions against it, but still coming from China. And in one case, we realized that the counterfeiters were using a hotel to store counterfeit Viagra. Hotel where? In which country? In Sharjah, UAE. Okay. This was, I think, quite innovative approach because this is a very low risk. You wouldn't be really suspicious about such a place. So the customers were going to the hotel to take the uh, counterfeit medicines. Uh, you wouldn't be suspicious if you see a truck going through the parking garage, because this hotel, they may need food. Anyway, uh, we developed the case. As far as that, we usually do long-term investigations. We identify those in the local market, in this case, Sharjah, UAE, and then we try to build a case in the source country, in China, as we did. And after referring our findings to the authorities in China, authorities in China uh, made several investigations and seized millions of tablets, counterfeit yes. tablets in China. So everything started with a uh, hotel in Sharjah, UAE. Yes. How does the product, product look like? Can the customer make a difference with yeah, counterfeit product and origi original product? I wish I had Visually, in, in, in first yeah. look. I wish I had a slide with me. Um, what is really most important for a typical counterfeiter is the appearance of the tablet, not efficacy, not whether it really works or not. I don't know whether I give a good explanation. So yes. the most concern is if this counterfeit product is very similar to the... Yes. Uh, having said that, yes. usually you wouldn't be able to um, identify the counterfeit product. They would look very, very similar. I have been working in this job, it's my eighth year. I can't sometimes visually differentiate the counterfeit one. Gospodine Dimeo, gdje se prodaju ti lažni lijekovi o kojima govori gospodin Jaman? Gdje se oni prodaju? U nekim ljekarnama, na ulici, na veliko? Kako to izgleda u praksi? There are different situations. Uh, for instance, in Africa, we have been we are working very closely with uh, African authorities and it's easy to find uh, these products also in the local markets, even in uh, fake products in the official distribution channels, so official pharmacies as well. We found uh, these products uh, when we were working uh, in the southeastern region, even in clinics, there were uh, counterfeit products. Yeah, the doctors were not aware that... that in yes. some cases, the, doctor, the doctors were not aware. In other cases, we think that they were aware, actually. So it's a matter, of course, uh, um, of, of price, so they, they try to, uh, and then there's also, um, in some cases, uh, uh, genuine products are also mixed, so there's a, a percentage, in order to reduce cost, you see, and to, 
to, to, to treat patients, um, they mix original products with, uh, with fake ones. So the situations are very uh, different. Of course, in Europe, uh, uh, our problem is mainly represented by the, 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 the sale online, because these online pharmacies uh, are spread everywhere. Uh, Interpol uh, annually organizes a big operation, uh, Operation Pangea. I'm not in charge of it. Uh, we have um, a colleague, we have at Interpol uh, a unit uh, specifically focused on uh, pharmaceutical crime. Mm -hmm. My colleague Alain Ponson uh, is in charge of this deployment, uh, which has been repeated many times, always with very interesting results, mm -hmm. but it's still a drop in the ocean. So these sites are closed down. Uh, in some cases, manufacturing sites are identified and dismantled, but it's very easy to start again the production and the distribution. So uh, our efforts, our attention must be really constant. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bakasic, I have a question for you. Uh, I mean, zanima me kazne. Kazne za ova dijela o kojima govorimo danas u Turskoj. Vjerujem da je regulativa slična kao u Europskoj uniji. Kakve su kazne neke skupine koje se bavi krivotvorenjem neke robe? Koliko može zatvora dobiti organizator takve skupine? I think you are mentioning about fines. Yes, fines and prison sentences. If uh, organized crime member uh, arrested, uh, he he would go to sentence uh, to, um, at least two two years. Or, yes. but uh, if a person who uh, committed the, this crime uh, uh, personally, mm -hmm. uh, he he takes the money fines. Just yes, yes, okay. Just. A u Hrvatskoj, gospođo Posavec, kakve su kazne? Pa evo, dakle, u prosjeku između jedne i tri godine zatvora ili novčana kazna. Ili imamo osuda nekih već, ili su one rijetke. Jučer sam razgovarao sa predstavnicima zabavne industrije, filanske industrije, oni zapravo kažu da dosta se, da pravosuđe sporo, nisu gore da je policija sporo, ali kažu da je pravosuđe sporo i da je zapravo pravosuđe nije ni svjesno koliki je to problem. Ali imamo osuda nekih? Pa osuda svakako ima, no međutim, upravo što ste spomenuli, dakle, postupci znaju biti poprilično dugotrajni i mislim da tu također nedostaje edukacije u smislu i specializiranih sudaca možda za to područje i također njihovo osjećivanje o važnosti tog problema. Upravo zato i mi nastojimo organizirati i zajedničke edukacije na kojem će, dakle, osim politijskih službenika, biti i državni odnici i sudci i druga relevantna tijela. Mislimo da na taj način možemo i bolje i uspješnije si zajedno raditi. Ove grupe koje ste spominjali, koje proizvode lažnu robu, da li su to grupe koje su u Hrvatskoj? Pa, do sada u Hrvatskoj... U Hrvatskoj ili su to internacionalne grupe koje koriste Hrvatsku kao s koje je na teritoriju? Da, uglavnom je Hrvatska ili transitna ili zemlja odredišta krivotvorene robe. Dakle, do sada, prema našim saznanjima, nismo imali zabilježenih slučajeva da se ta krivotvorena roba, bar u velikom količinu proizvodi na samom teritoriju Hrvatske ali uglavnom dolazi tim poznatim kanalima, najčešće je porijekla ili iz Turske, Kine, Indije i sl. Imate skladište neko, koliko se sjećam, gdje ta roba postoji, ono je prilično huge. Da, upravo to je jedan nije od problema iz razloga što mi nemamo osiguran adekvatan prostor, recimo za skladištenje upravo tako privremeno oduzete robe. A što radite s njom, onda uništavate ili? Roba se uništava temelje sudske odluke, naravno. Hoću reći da je upravo to problem i da nastojimo to nekako riješiti sa nositeljima prava ili sa drugim državnim tijelima koje nam u tom slučaju izađe u susret. Upravo oko skladištenja tako privremeno oduzete robe. Nisam siguran da li sam postavio to pitanje koliki su gubici, korporativni gubici, evo, stalno se vraćamo na ljekovi, ako nisu ljekovi jedini problem, ali pošto ste vi tu, koliki su gubici Pfizera, ako to nije poslovna tajna, nadam se da nije, koliki su gubici globalnih Pfizera zbog krivotvorenih ljekova? For Pfizer, as the biggest pharmaceutical company, our main focus is patient health and safety. We don't really work on uh, calculating um, financial um, losses here. Mm. Um, we always work to ensure that mm. uh, anybody who wants to buy a Pfizer product receive authentic Pfizer product. Mm. That's our commitment.
Yes, I'm sure. But uh, there is, a, let's try to make uh, the different argument. Uh, yeah. There is an ethic question. Uh, I read somewhere that uh, the people who are making counterfeit pharmaceuticals say yeah. that they're cheaper and they're uh, cheaper and somebody can buy and which some, some person who has a health problem can easily buy the cheaper medicine and stay alive than to buy yours which is mo more expensive. Did you heard, hear that argument? Okay, I haven't maybe uh, heard in the same way, but if you are saying that people sometimes prefer to buy um, counterfeit products deliberately because they're cheaper, mm -hmm. this is another scenario. Uh, counterfeit medicines are manufactured at unlicensed places. Um, usually they are very unsanitary places, and that's why um, these medicines um, can pose serious health risks. We have examples. In one case, for instance, in fact, in Hungary, uh, maybe uh, my colleague may remember, we found Viagra, country Viagra. It was uh, containing sildenafil, which is the active ingredient. Yes, but just one pill can kill you then. Hmm? One pill can kill you. One counterfeited, counterfeited no, pill. No, I will tell you something else. <laughs> I'm coming there. Um, it was 100 milligram form, but we found 335 milligram. Mm -hmm. This may easily kill a person. Yes, we found another example, again in Hungary. I don't know why I'm giving Hungary just a coincidence, pure coincidence. We found amphetamine in it. Yeah, it's a drug, amphetamine. Amphetamine is a drug. Um, you, can, you can use it as an ecstasy. So this is, these are the areas that we are concerned and we are focusing on. Um, we are very committed to patient safety and our pure focus is on this part. Želio bi ipak da se dotaknemo danas i ovog dijela o kojem smo jučer govorili, a to je zaštita intelektualnog vlasništva u smislu kod filmske industrije, u zabavnoj industriji, u glazbi. Zato me zanima, gospodine Dimeo, ilegalno skidanje filmova sa interneta Da li Interpol tu uopće može nešto napraviti? Da li se Interpol bavi sa tim? Jučer su predstavnici industrije bili dosta skeptični oko toga da se nešto može popraviti. Oni kažu da imaju ogromne gubitke. Što Interpol radi da spriječi ove servise ilegalne torente i kako se već zovu, da se filmovi skidaju sa njih? Da se da Interpol ima concentrated uh, his forces and his uh, um, attention uh, over the last, uh, last period, I would say, on those products uh, potentially harmful to public health and safety. So I recognize that uh, um, our, say, strategy over the last months has been to, to target uh, uh, more attentively uh, uh, products potentially harmful, so like cosmetics, uh, agrochemicals, uh, uh, and whatever, because it's, it's much easier to convey the message about the, 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 yes, the, the, yes. the issues represented by these products. So this, and I we know, have a I'm bit neglected the okay. da, da, illegal downloading, whatever, but this is still um, our core business. Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, uh, in, in this field, cooperation uh, between countries is important because uh, this platform for the, um, illegal downloading uh, are based in a country then perpetrators are based in another country. Uh, the service is uh, offered to another country again, yes. so. And it's all online, it's hard exactly, to keep track. Exactly, it's online. So we had a case, for instance, uh, uh, over the last months, um, uh, where a criminal organization from Moldova uh, providing uh, a platform for illegal downloading uh, to Italian users were making huge profits. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the, the server was hosted in, in Ukraine, so this shows how important it is to cooperate, uh, to involve uh, uh, the different authorities, the different prosecutors uh, in, um, in a member country. So uh, we continue, of course, to, uh, to ask our countries to share information with us, to ask our support, to use our tools to uh, better fight against this crime. In the same time, uh, it's absolutely important to raise the awareness of the public. Uh, Interpol has a very important strength, which is his, his brand. Uh, also, this morning, due to the, during the discussion with uh, my honorable colleagues, uh, uh, we have pointed out uh, the importance of raising this awareness of, of uh, uh, doing better and better. So, we are fully available to join the collective efforts uh, 
uh, for an awareness, a strong awareness campaign uh, with the Ministry of Interior in Croatia, but also covering the, the, the whole region. Um, I think that we, we, we must keep really this uh, uh, dual approach. Of course, continuing exchanging information with police and countries, because this is a transnational crime, and at the same time, trying to decrease the, the demand. Yeah. I don't have the answer, of course, it's not easy. I'm okay. not discovering today the whole truth. It's quarter, very hard, yes. But, very hard. but of yeah. course, we, as, from an Interpol perspective, we are very much convinced that it's important to do it, and we are ready to support the national efforts with our brand. I was thinking about, for instance, uh, um, new videos uh, to, to be projected before um, films in the cinemas, whatever, uh, with Interpol trying to, to convey this message that uh, these, crimin these are organized criminals, uh, this crime is destroying the local economy and it's funding yes. organized criminal groups. Yes. Uh, vas, gospođo, posavec, jedno pitanje, barem u ime gospode s kojima sam vičer razgovarao u Hrvatskoj, uh, da li policija ima način da se priječi, recimo, ilegalno skidanje bilo kakvog sadržaja s interneta? Ajmo govoriti o glazbi. Rekli su vičer gospoda iz Zampa, gospodin, da se zapravo CD i opće više ne prodaju u dućanima, nego da se sve ilegalno skida i, i koliko zapravo možemo, jako je teško to s obzirom da je sve na internetu, da li uopće tu možemo nekako riješiti taj problem? Pa evo, isto kao što je Simone već rekao, problem je tome što internet ne poznaje granice ne poznaje državnu nadležnost. Uglavnom se radi o stranicama koje niti nisu otvorene, odnosno registrirane na području Reporuke Hrvatske, nego ima nekakvi međunarodni karakter. I tu je izredno... Da, tu naše stvari ovlasti prestaju, odnosno mi smo upućeni, dakle, bilo preko Interpola, nekih drugih tijela ili putem instituta međunarodne pravne pomoći tražiti upravo od tih drugih država podatke koje bi nam pomogli u otkrivanju takvih kaznenih dijela. Naravno, to je i dugotrani složen... Ali se izreste nije ga toliko jednostavno riješiti i upravo je potrebna tu međunarodna suradnja, inicijativa, jer jedna država upravo velim zbog tih tog nepostojanja granica na internetu teško možete problem riješiti sam. Što kažete, ono je francuski primjer gdje se onaj koji ilegalno nešto napravi na internetu tri put upozorava pa onda mu se usporava brzi na internetu. Da li edukacija može ići u tom smislu u korespondenciji s privatnim sektorom ili? Da, francuzi su smislili jedan takav zgodan sustav upozorenja iz razloga što većina, jedan dio građana niti nije svjesna da je možda da je to što rade protuzakonito i ilegalno zabranjeno. Znači, kod nekih stvarno funkcionira takav sustav upozorenja. Kod nekih ne, koji su svjesni i misle da je to dopušteno do toma ničeg loših će raditi dalje. Upravo zato su razredan taj zgodan sustav upozorenja, pa ukoliko nakon toga osoba ne prekine sa tim nedozvoljenim radnjama, slijede nekakve sankcije i druge stvari. Tako da mislim da to isto nije loš sustav. Gospodine Bakašić, bit ću slobodno nas pitati, vi ste iz Turske, iz kojeg rada? Gdje radite? U kojem gradu? Ankara. Ok, bio sam u Ankari, ali pitanje ide prema Istanbulu. Istanbul je, ispričavam se, i turističko, ali i trgovačko središte svijeta. Da li se na ulicama Istanbula može naći opasna krivotvorena roba također? Ili to ide nekim drugim kanalima? U našem kanalu, Istanbul je centru IP krajima. Uh, you can uh, find any counterfeit or uh, pirate uh, things in Istanbul. Even medicines? Uh, re yes. Uh, mm, before uh, two, two, months, uh, two months ago, there was an uh, operation about medicines. Uh, and uh, we, we... You work together? We are being together, uh, we were being together uh, the, in this operation. Yes. Were there some arrests in these actions? Uh, yes, uh, in, I want to give an uh, information about uh, operations in last five years about organized IP crimes. Uh, there was, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. No problem, <laughs> In last five years, uh, 665 suspects detained. Uh, yes, that's, that's, that's a lot of work. It's a uh, serious uh, number and uh, so many of them uh, arrested in Turkey uh, because of organized IP crimes uh, and 16 uh, organized crime uh, groups
collapsed uh, in these operations. Pokušajmo iskoristiti ovih zadnjih deset minuta da budu što zanimljiviji. Gospodine Dimeo, vaš jedan najzanimljiviji dan u Interpolu, kako to izgleda? Interpol više koordinira, nema puno akcija, ali recite nam jedan najzanimljiviji dan vezano za neku akciju hvatanja kriminalaca ili razminu informacija. Ispričajte nam neko iskustvo. Uvijek... It's important to, to arrest criminals, of course, to identify criminals. Ideally, uh, we, uh, our, ta our goal is to dismantle criminal organizations. Of course, it's, this is not, uh, not so easy anyway. You're uh, not police, to yeah. be right. You just, uh, you just coordinate. Yeah, exactly, we, we coordinate. So uh, we are, Interpol, of course, um, um, has uh, its system of international alerts. We, pub we issue uh, notices. Maybe you have already heard about um, the Interpol notices. The red notices, uh, in particular, aiming at arresting criminals in order to extradite them on the basis of uh, uh, a request from a member country. And they are normally, according to the international law, they are recognized, they, they, they are immediately effective. Um, we have cases, of course, of um, very serious cases of um, these uh, uh, notices uh, uh, issued uh, against uh, criminals involved in IP crime. Uh, IP crime with serious health and safety implications. I would mention. When you say IP crime, what do you mean? Uh, IP exactly. Crime, I, I mean intellectual property crime, of course. Yes. Okay. Uh, so fake goods yes. uh, with serious implications, such as, for instance, we are now also focused on food related crime. We started a project uh, to protect the geographical indications, which is, of course, something referring to IP crime. Uh, champagne is a. Uh, is, uh, the, the name of the product is also brand, registered. Um, uh, and this is very, uh, very threatening because we have the most serious case I can mention at the moment is um, uh, a citizen from Ecuador uh, that was running uh, a manufacturing site of uh, fake uh, alcoholic drinks. Uh, and, uh, Which are also very dangerous. Very as dangerous drugs. because there were there were um, over 40 individuals uh, killed, so poisoned after drinking these uh, these products. So it's something really threatening, and we are uh, cases spreading everywhere. So I mentioned this case because uh, it has the link with uh, other countries. This person disappeared. He was exporting even to other countries in the U.S and uh, um, he disappeared, so he's still wanted by Interpol. And this is just an example you can, you can see. Which drinks were they? Some luxury uh, it, drinks it, or it cheap it drinks? Alcoholic drinks, it was mainly whiskey and uh, yeah. Uh, then the cases are very, very different. We seized during this uh, big operation uh, just before Christmas uh, a significant amount of uh, fake champagne with the labels perfectly reproduced. Just before Christmas, I would say in Naples, so this is pretty suspicious, you see. It's just uh, giving us the idea that there's uh, something behind. Uh, but these cases are very, uh, are very important for us because they show that how criminals are really trying to uh, uh, make diverse the production of, of goods, you see. So even food products uh, are all, concerned. They're finding new ways, I presume. Always. They always find new ways. Yeah. And uh, it's easy, of course, as I was saying, uh, um, uh, many cases, criminals we have identified were already known for other crimes, so for, for drug trafficking and, uh, uh, and the trafficking human beings. They are linked with uh, the exploitation of uh, um, uh, um, immigration. So you see, uh, in Turkey, for instance, Turkey was part of this uh, uh, operation uh, against the food-related crime last year, uh, and during just one week of action, the week of action means raise the awareness of our police forces, saying tr try to understand what's going on in this particular field, because nobody was thinking about uh, agrochemicals as a fake product. When I was in the field before joining the international organization, and I had to coordinate my men in the field, I, to be honest, I was much focused on uh, traditional textile products, uh, audiovisual piracy, whatever, but I couldn't expect that, for instance, agrochemicals can be a very sensitive uh, target, a sensitive commodity. Uh, there are fake agrochemicals produced in China and exported uh, to, to Europe, to Eastern Europe. So about food-related crime, for instance, Turkey, uh, in just one week of action, identified uh, some uh, uh, Bulgarian citizens running a production of fake alcohol, again, yes. after 
significant cases of fake alcohol poisoning uh, unaware consumers in Turkey. We had fake honey, let's say honey declared. Fake honey. Fake honey, I mean declared as Where, in which country, national, please? yes, national product was only uh, Turkish honey. Instead, it was a mixture of honey coming from different uh, countries and sold. Uh, the situation is very uh, fragmented. Yes, your your job very is very diverse. interesting. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> we, can, we can have we can have of course cases which are just commercial frauds. You see, um, the last case of a ho host, the host meat scandal shows um, a fail within the, the 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 safety chain, the safety food chain. So this is why we are trying now to increase to improve the cooperation also with uh, the private sector involved in the, in the supply of uh, food products. But this is just an example to, to show you how um, uh, this, uh, this phenomenon is large, is extended, and how yes. it can really concern different fields. Uh, thank you for your in very, very interesting answer. Gospodin Posec, the last thing about which you talk about, Dimeo, in Croatia, is also a large food. We saw some of the priča, fere, sastojci, lažni, tako da. Da li postoji baš neki prehrambeni proizvod koji se krije otvorio? Pa do, do sada nismo imali zabilježenih većih slučajeva, iako je bilo upravo što je slično što je Simone spomenuo, dakle slučaj sa, sa alkoholnim pićima, dakle koji... To se također su završilo u vašem skladištu? Da, dakle jednostavno se drže lažnu etiketu, odnosno deklariranje proizvod koji za, koristi se neko poznato ime, a naravno tekućina koja je unutra u tim bocama nema, nema, veze, nema veze sa time. Koliko je opasno konzumiranje takvog proizvoda? Pa, upravo ti prehrambeni i naravno i medicinski proizvodi su izuzetno opasni iz razloga što ugrožavaju ljudsko zdravlje. Dakle, mogu uzrokovati nekak, od nekakvih banalnih poteškoća do ozbiljnih trovanja, pa čak i smrtnih posljedica. I za samo još jedna stvar zanima, imamo još par minuta. Ulazimo u Europsku uniju ovoga ljeta. Da li će na granicama se promijeniti režim? Granice se otvaraju. Što to znači za Hrvatsku? Kako ćete provoditi sustav kontrole? Da, pa to je jedna od stvari na koje, na koje svakako moramo računati. Znači, ulaskom Hrvatskoj i Europsku uniju dolazi do, do liberalizacije granica, a samim time i do lakšeg protoka roba, pa tako, nažalost, i krivotvorenih roba. E, to se dogodilo i u našem okruženju, u državama koje su također ušle u Europsku uniju, znači da se mi pripremamo otprilike na, na, na sličan scenarij i da moramo biti spremni dakle, na ulaganje još više napora na tom području. Evo, ostavit ćemo par minuta, kaže nam Andreja, da možda neko iz publika je zainteresiran da postoje pitanje našim gostima. Ja se ispričavam što smo vas zanemarili, ali je zanjela nas je rasprava. Čak smo i malo imena zamijenili. <laughs> Izvolite. Dobar dan, ja sam Robert Gogić iz PZ Auta, autovoznika. Imam jedno pitanje e, za gospođu Posavac. E, da li ste svjesni krivotvorju na auto dijelova? To vas pitam iz dva razloga. Kao prvo, ti dijelovi, pogotovo ako su ugrađeni na sigurnostnim sklopovima, mogu izazvati prometnu nesreću sa štetnim posljedicama. A često isto tako ti dijelovi se ugrađuju u servisima koji su prijavljeni ili nisu prijavljeni, pa i na taj način štete državnom proračunu. Da, to je svakako isto jedan od problema. Um, ono gdje smo mi to uočili, dakle, da se takvi krivotvoreni dijelovi mogu pronaći na autosajmovima i sličnim sajmovima gdje se prodaju. E, naravno, e, nama je svaka informacija značajna. Dakle, ukoliko raspolažete bilo kakvim informacijama, bilo za neki servis ili fizičku osobu ili pravnu osobu koja prodaje takve dijelove koji su krivotvorene, evo ja bih vas mola da nam proslijedite tu informaciju pa ćemo mi postupati. Imamo li još neko pitanje? Izvolite. Za gospodina Dimea, da li Interpol ima procjenu koliko su nastaju ekonomske štete na nivou jedne godine za gospodarstvo Evropske unije zbog krivotvorenih ili narušavanja prava intelektualnog vlasništva? To be honest, uh, um, this is not Interpol jobs to, to make estimations. Uh, we normally rely on the estimations um, for Europe, according to my, for my program given by the European Commission, that normally rely uh, on, the, on the seizures uh, um, executed by the customs officers. So normally, th these are the statistics. Uh, for, for us, of course, um, uh, we always try, of course, to, to estimate, to evaluate uh, the, the value of the goods we seized. Uh, about fake goods, uh, it's, it's not myself that I have declared that, uh, um, you see, uh, when a kilo of fake CDs uh, fetches 50% uh, more on European markets than a kilo of cannabis leaf, 
no one should be surprised that organized crime is getting involved. So this is Mr. Barroso, president of the European Commission, saying this so far. In particular, it's, it's important to uh, understand the, the profit that these products have for, for criminal groups. Um, of course, about the, est the estimations, uh, there are a lot of figures, so all the associations. We have the, the observatory um, um, on counterfeiting and piracy, uh, which is established now within uh, uh, the, the office for the harmonization of the internal market, uh, you were mentioning uh, earlier, which is also in charge of uh, uh, estimate uh, the economic impact. Of course, there's an economic impact. Victor Hugo, in a, also, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Fitzgerald, I want to mention Victor Hugo, uh, the most important French writer. Uh, in 1846, he said that uh, the, the uh, illicit trade um, is uh, dangerous, is, uh, uh, can destroy the national economy. So it's important to, 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 to combat illicit trade and to protect the, the fair trade. So today, with the globalization, with the new challenges we have to face, uh, it's much more important to, to um, keep it, uh, um, to bear in mind that these, uh, these words, even from a very important uh, writer. Uh, just a, a remark about the, the um, ca, um, spare parts, car spare parts. It's a very important uh, target commodity. We have seized uh, in our operations in South America a significant amount uh, of, uh, of these products. Uh, we have established also some um, uh, partnerships with uh, the private sector. Uh, now I don't know which is your com which your company is, but for us it would be really important to have uh, uh, any uh, actionable intelligence uh, information cases uh, in order to identify within the, the Interpol member countries the relevant services to to address, uh, because of course the implications for health and safety are absolutely evident in this field. Of course, we can receive information both from the private sector directly and from the international central bureaus. So we really have a, a holistic approach, inclusive approach. We want to get on board all those that can contribute uh, to, the, to the success against this crime. Nikica Gligorić, upravo za indirektno prezivanje Bosne i Hercegovine. Pošto tamo jednim pitanjem, ja mislim da ću uspjeti da pokrijem sve vas i Mađarsku i Tursku i Italiju, samo jedno pojašnjenje. Govorimo o saradnji na području intelektualnog. Kroz naš zadnji premet u Bosni i Hercegovini desila se utaja kod prilike više stotina miliona konvertibilnih maraka. Vežu se preduzeća iz Italije, iz Mađarske i iz Turske. Poznato je u zadnje vrijeme znači da turski, ovaj, italijanski, kineski gradovi, a gospodin Simone vjerojatno to zna, izvozi se roba za Bosnu i Hercegovinu preko Mađarske. Poznato je da je Mađarska regionalno kinesko skladište i roba završava u Bosni i Hercegovini. Poznato je da je Turska glavna izvoznica znači za Bosnu i Hercegovinu, a u ovom predmetu gdje se radi i o organizovanom kriminalu, i o porezkoj utaji, i o carinskoj prevari, i još drugim e, dijelima pogotovo vezano za intelektualno vlasništvo, na naše pitanje, znači ponavljam da se radi o utaj e, e, po budžet Bosne i Hercegovine u iznosu od više stotina miliona maraka, znači više stotina miliona eura, dobili smo odgovor iz Mađarske e, da je roba izašla samo iz Europske unije i da su te firme sa sjedištem samo u Mađarskoj i ništa više, a odgovor iz Turske smo dobili da su prezauzeti da bi se bavili sa tim. Mi smo dokazali da od 1996. sav izvoz ide na osnovu lažne dokumentacije, a ovdje govorimo znači o saradnji. Kako možemo da je poboljšamo u narodnom periodu? I drugo pitanje za gospodu iz Fajzera, a vidim da su ovdje moderatori iz Roša, vezano za farmaceutsku industriju. Gospoda, kad se radi o farmaceutskoj industriji, treba bi da poznaju i zakonsku regulativu zemalja u kojoj se roba izvozi, koliko ja znam. Znači, u gro zemalja, znači tako i u Bosni i Hercegovini, roba je oslobođena za testiranje i carine i poreza, ali se to radi o testnim lijekovima u manjim količinama. A u Bosni i Hercegovini je izuzeno par šlepera testnih lijekova koji su oslobođeni carini i poreza. Kako je to moguće? Hvala.
Actually, I couldn't understand the question. Could you repeat the question? Yosher, da ponovim Yosher, znači što se tiče farmaceutske industrije, lijekovi za testiranje odnose se na manje količine, par desetina, a ovdje govorimo o lijekovima za kancer. Znači manje količinova koje se mogu testirati na ljudima, na životinjama, a ne govorimo o šleperima. Kako je moguće da su preduzeća ozbiljna, možda kao i vaša, izvezla te lijekove u ogromnim količinama, možda u našu zemlju? Hvala. Evo, ja, probat ću ja odgovoriti, ja sam direktor Oša Hrvatska, osnovao sam ured i representation office u Bosni i Hercegovini, da znam relativno dobro situaciju. Znači, ovisi o vašim nacionalnim autoritetima, da bi mogao nekakav lijek ući i dobiti dozvolu, da bi dobio uh, status lijeka za kliničko ispitivanje, mora dobiti dozvolu od ministra, federalnog ili uh, ministarstva Republike Srpske, mora dobiti financijsku dozvolu, znači mora dobiti oslobođenje, znači mora proći zakonodavnu proceduru u zemlji u, u kojoj se taj lijek koji je namijenjen za kliničko ispitivanje uvozi. Na tome to nije stvar industrije, to je stvar lokalnih nadležnih tijela koje se bave tom problematikom. Da li postoje neki koji to probaju provući na ovaj način? Vjerojatno da, ali to je kriminal koji svaki drugi kriminal treba ga sankcionirati. Can I reply, just, can I just add about no, my part of the question, Ako of course. Andrea kaže da može. <laughs> so about instead the transnational case you uh, pointing out, uh, um, I'm not aware specifically of, of this case. I'm fully uh, available to, to have more details anyway and to, to, to try to find out more information about it. Um, I, I, in, at this stage I, I can say that we cannot assure, of course, because uh, the, the success. We are, Interpol is uh, a, a liaison uh, service, of course. Uh, Interpol's role is to connect police for a safer world, to facilitate uh, interventions, cooperation, and whatever. Uh, we have established a very good cooperation in way with the Hungarian customs. I was in Budapest la 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 last week. They are uh, very active uh, in the capacity building and whatever. Uh, and also in supporting uh, our initiative in operations and whatever. When we have something uh, for the Hungarian customs, we, we get normally uh, answers in a reasonable uh, delay, uh, as well as the Turkish with all the difficulties they can uh, um, also find in some cases uh, due to the legal framework, uh, because uh, they can investigate ex officio uh, the um, uh, copyright infringement, but not uh, uh, the industrial property. This is why the support of the private sector, the applications from the private sector, the right holders uh, are very important in order to, to, to get interventions done. Um, but I'm fully aware, uh, available, of course, to better discuss this case. Uh, the Interpol General Secretariat has also function to monitor uh, what the national central bureaus are doing uh, uh, in a specific, with, with a specific case, and also to, uh, to boost the, the action of the national law enforcement. So we can maybe discuss later, and I invite uh, uh, all the participants today also to, um, unfortunately, uh, I would say to, to note my email address, but uh, I, we don't have the slide, <laughs> but uh, our colleagues from the, uh, the, organi the organizers will be absolutely uh, ready to, to provide you with all my contact details, uh, and uh, I really look forward uh, to receiving your inputs. As per my part regarding um, Pfizer, at least, all pharmaceutical companies are highly, very highly regulated, inspected, starting from FDA in the States, and then they're also highly regulated by the local authorities in respective countries. Pfizer, as an American company, has to comply with American constitution as well. And as Pfizer, as the biggest pharmaceutical company, we are quite transparent. I am not really the right person or the expertise to give you a satisfactory um, explanation on this at this stage. But if you get in touch with Pfizer colleagues in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I'm sure they would provide you with the necessary uh, and satisfactory uh, answer. So is the flight. 
Zahvaljujem. Ja ću, iako nam se kava već hladi, iskoristiti priliku možda za zadnje brzo pitanje za gospodina Jamana. Mr. Jaman, one quick question for you. Vi ste dugo godina radili u policijskim snagama, sada radite u privatnom sektoru. Nemaju sve kompanije razvijen global security, odnosno vlastite snage za suradnju sa policijom. Kakav bi bio vaš savjet privatnom sektoru u suradnji sa policijom? Kako trebaju izgledati informacije, ako imaju neka saznanja, na koji način privatni sektor može pomoći policiji u efikasnijoj borbi protiv krivotvorina? Hvala vam mnogo. To je jedna veliko veliko pitanja, tako da imam da se možda kontribuiti na situaciju malo. Hvala kolaboracijom između privatnog sektora i lokalne autoritete je vrlo. Privatni sektor, u moj kajsu, na primjer Pfizer, imamo inteligenciju. Why and how we have the challenge? Because we have customer complaints. We use um, certain databases, for instance, IMS. Maybe you're not familiar with this database. It's used in pharma sector. We can easily identify a retailer if selling a Pfizer product or not. We have a formal law enforcement personnel who are now also educated with the business. So. They do understand the concept. They understand the backlog law enforcement have, and they also understand how the supply chain works. It's a good combination because this is what the police is lacking. So whenever we uh, have a case, we usually develop this case in the best way before referring it to the local authorities. And eventually, when the case is ready as a package to be given to the local authorities, They have now a good case to start with. And because they were lacking about how the supply chain is working, we are there to support them on this. One of my jobs is also to identify the best practices in other countries and try to share them with the uh, local authorities in other countries. I think um, collaboration between private sector and The local authorities is vital, as we discussed earlier. Collaboration between local authorities in the country is very important. And also international collaboration is very important. If you, if you can manage all these three, I think you have a very strong, efficient, sustainable fight against current medicines in Croatia and the region. I'll give just one example and then finish. I have a current case. There is a website offering one of our products. The system works this way. You go to a website, you make the order, then somebody in Slovenia calls the person giving the order, and they arrange the place of the delivery. Somebody comes with a taxi, personally, gives you the medicine, and he takes the money back. When we worked on this case, okay, our Initial idea was maybe to ask police to arrest this courier. However, we later on discovered that this website is managed by somebody in Croatia. So if you only see uh, one pack and police asks, uh, sorry, arrest this individual, this will not solve the problem. We need to get in touch with the authorities in Croatia to maybe arrange kind of simultaneous action on both sides. Otherwise, this will be a little bit based on resources. No, I, I just wanted to add something to that because we, we really have experience with, with this question and, and it might be helpful. But I think this customs monitoring is a very helpful tool to start conversation with the authorities because there every company free of charge so customs monitoring is free of charge which will be available 
has to be available in Croatia from the 1st of July, you can actually add all information you have as a right holder, which has to leave customs or investigative authorities, meaning just prepare colored pictures. It's very simple. You have to show them which is genuine and what is fake. You can even point out the very typical features of the counterfeit products so that it's very easy for customs to identify. The more colorful you get and the simple, the easiest it will be for customs to identify. And maybe to, to reach then the, the Ministry of Interior to help you, there is a centralized, has to be or should be a centralized point from which the uh, information can be distributed to all customs authorities. So I really can encourage you to prepare such brochures and, and file it with your customs monitoring request as a start with these negotiations, which is really a great help to to the investigators, I think.